For those of you who do not know, the United Kingdom is often referred to as Turf Island. And you hear, you might have heard that term around. You might not know what that actually means. Especially if you're trans, you already know what this means. If you're plugged into trans communities, you probably already know what this means. But in case you don't know what that means, the reason why the UK is frequently referred to as Turf Island is because a, a certain ideology has taken hold um, of a lot of the uh, uh, upper echelon liberal institutions in the United Kingdom. And that is the ideology of trans exclusionary radical feminism. This is a, a type of feminism that essentially asserts that trans people are not the gender that they claim they are. Now, this ideology believes that there is something essential to the quality of being a woman, that womanhood is not, as previous feminists have uh, have sort of come to understand, a, a, a social role that is imposed upon you by a patriarchal system. No, instead they view being uh, a woman as something inherently biological. And just for those of you who hear that and go, hmm, that doesn't exactly, that, I, that's not clicking for me. When we talk about sex and gender, we're talking about two different things. Gender is a big collection of self-expression, societally expected roles, um, the roles that you that you fulfill, et cetera, et cetera. That is gender. Gender is the social aspect of um, of our of our lives. It's uh, it's it's being called a woman. It's being called a man. It's being non-binary. It's being uh, a gender. It's all of these different things are 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 wrapped up in gender. And gender is very complicated and very social okay Th there's a reason why um like feminine men are treated poorly in our highly gendered society it's because they are seen as not doing gender correctly now of course this is absurd because with something so uh huge as gender the reality is that everybody expresses gender differently and that there are many ways to understood understand masculinity femininity manhood and womanhood and um, the sort of current uh, viewpoint of, 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 of a lot of gender uh, thinkers, people who write about gender and who are, are talking about gender, is that gender is a, a, a totally social construct that has some very tenuous ties to our biology. Sex is what we talk about when we're talking about biology. And of course, there are problems in talking about, about sex as a binary as well. So what you often hear is that there is a gender and sex binary by people who are anti-trans. They will say there are there is man and there is woman and that is it. There is male and there is female. This is not true. And when I say it's not true, I don't mean that it's a mat just a matter of interpretation. It is simply categorically untrue. Gender expression has never in the history of the world been just man and just woman ever. Sex has never been just XY and just XX. There are intersex people, a lot of them. There are more intersex people in the United States than there are redheads. There are more trans people in the United States than there are redheads. And yet we recognize that being a redhead is a true hair color. Re do you see where we're, where we're getting with this? The idea of a gender or sex binary is false. It is false. It is not true. So, um... What, what people say when they say, oh, you can be a man or you can be a woman, there's only two genders or whatever, when they actually say that, yes, that's actually true. Yes, that's actually true. Um, and when people, uh, when people say this about uh, gender and sex, what they're doing is they are, um, they are telling you that they have an ideology that they believe that you are violating, okay? And this is where turfism comes in, trans exclusionary radical feminism, a feminist and allegedly feminist movement that basically says if you don't fit their arbitrary, highly essentialist view of, uh, of, of womanhood, then you are not a woman in their mind. And as you can tell, this is kind of like, well, that seems kind of weird, isn't it? Doesn't it seem kind of weird to cut people who are identified by society as uh, as women? Uh, people who are treated as women legally in many cases, um, w isn't it weird to treat them not like women? Seeing as how the way that people are oppressed because of their femininity or womanhood in patriarchy is social, you know? So, for example, 
Let me give you an example of this. Let's say that I go outside. If I walk outside right now, uh, I, I, I pass. If I don't tell anybody, people think that I'm a woman be because they see that I have long hair and they see that I talk like this and I usually have, you know, piercings and my nails painted. I have some of those feminine signifiers that people erroneously associate only with femininity. And as a result, because I am seen that way, people treat me with the same systemic discrimination that women face, that cis women face. This is why we say not only is this is one of the reasons why we say trans women are women. The other reason is because we acknowledge that womanhood is a very complicated thing to define. If you ask 100 people what a woman is, you will get a you will get a hundred different answers. And because of that, we recognize that womanhood is largely and manhood for that matter. All of gender is largely a matter of self identity and relation to the societal milieu. Does that make sense? I hope everyone's keeping up with me right now. Now, of course, TERFs, trans exclusionary radical feminists, uh, reject this view, but they don't just reject this view. They they reject the idea that trans people are legitimate at all. And instead, they believe that there is a number of things varying on from somewhat understandable to completely conspiratorial. Um, for example, one thing that's very common in TERF, also known as gender critical, Gender critical is what a lot of TERFs call themselves these days because they don't like the term TERF. They don't like the idea of trans exclusion. They don't like being called out for being trans exclusionary. They call themselves gender critical. And a lot of gender critical people genuinely believe that all trans people are inherently mental Ill, mentally ill just because they understand their gender differently than what the gender critical, the TERFs, um, say that you should, which I think is absurd. I think that's not even a, a reasonable way of understanding mental mental health. Um, you know, mental illness isn't when you disagree with something that society does. Well, we'll get to that. But uh, it's it's when you are unhappy and you are hurting. Um, and and it's really wild. So uh, there's been a lot of drama about this uh, this this rising um, trans exclusionary radical feminism, specifically in the United Kingdom. And the reason for this, um, there's a lot of reasons for this, but one of the reasons for this is because the conservative leaning um, institutions in the UK have been very favorable to, tra to trans exclusionary um, messaging. Okay, so what you've seen is a lot of BBC mass media uh, stories about trans people that don't hold up to journalistic standards. They don't actually fact check them. And it's quite ridiculous. We've seen a, this has been an ongoing issue for years. And that is why uh, you will see the United Kingdom referred to as Turf Island very frequently. Because there is a, a plethora of publications that are willing to publish some of the most ridiculous, unscientific, and patently untrue things about trans people. Things that wouldn't be published for any other group. And that's what brings us to what we're going to talk about today, which is the BBC platforming someone who just days later went, wrote a manifesto, an anti-trans manifesto, okay? And I've been thinking right now as to whether I wanted to read the original article first or whether I wanted to read you bits of the, um, of the manifesto. And I think we're going to start with the manifesto because this manifesto is really the, 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 it's the real icing on the cake. This manifesto that we're about to go over was created by a, uh, a performer, an adult performer by the name of Lily Cade. Lily Cade is a famous, a, a quite famous lesbian, uh, adult filmmaker. Um, and, uh, and, uh, who's been, you know, relatively well known, um, for some time. However, Lily Cade, uh, is a vocal, vocal anti-trans, uh, anti-trans, uh, agitator, 
uh, Lily Cade has written anti-trans things for quite some time. And Lily Cade has uh, some severe sexual assault allegations in her past. And it's strange to me that somebody who uh, n admitted to sexual assault, by the way, who admitted to this, um, while being an adult film filmmaker, which is all is like what the fuck, um, also uh, was was uh, was was sort of invited to uh, to to give their opinion as if their opinion was qualified on trans people. Okay, so real real quick, the first thing I want to talk about here before we get too far off into into this into this subject. Um, is I want to talk about just very briefly the original article uh, that that uh, started all of this because there's some really really in there's some really really interesting stuff in it and I want to show you what this article looks like and then we're not going to read the whole thing we'll go back and revisit it after we've read the manifesto but real quick first let's uh, let's get this up uh, let's put this down here here okay there we go okay. This is the title of the article. This was published on the 26th of October. So very free, this is this episode is being recorded on the 3rd of November. So very recent article, okay? We're being pressured into sex by some trans women. And just so you know, this is in the news segment. This is not listed under uh under editorials. This is under the UK news segment, okay? This is a pretty major headline to run especially in a world in which we already know that it is an objective fact that trans people suffer from significant discrimination. So we're talking about one of the biggest and most reputable news organizations in the world, the BBC, a public news organization which has not has has carelessly been willing to publish an article that implies that trans people are pressuring people into sex. I think this is pretty bad to begin with. But as we get into the article, you will see that this is uh, uh, is is even even more uh, fear mongering and ridiculous than than you could uh, possibly imagine. Jenny is a lesbian woman. She says she is only sexually attracted to women who are biologically female and have vaginas. She therefore only has sex and relationships with women who are biologically female. Jenny doesn't think this should be controversial, but not everyone agrees. She has been described as transphobic, a genital fetishist, a pervert, and a turf, a trans-exclusionary radical feminist. This is the first paragraph of this article. And, and the weird thing about this is there's a lot of conflation of language, right? So she talks about somebody who has to be genetically female, biologically female, and have a vagina, which is a bit, you know, okay, whatever. That, like, if you got your own personal preferences, okie dokie. But you're just, you're broadcasting these preferences to the world at the beginning of an article, and your preferences are nonsensical. You have to look at what people say when they say their, their preferences, right? So what if you met a woman who had a vagina and you were hitting it off really, really hard with her and you go home and you have a great time and you, you maybe keep, you know, maybe you, you keep seeing each other and you have lots of sex and you're really enjoying it and her vagina is great. And then you find out it's a neo vagina. Are you, is that, is that really rational to say, wow, wait a minute. I, I had this whole time with somebody who had a neo vagina and then i found out they were trans and then that's that's bad even though i enjoyed myself i enjoyed the person i enjoyed their the sex with them we had a great time together but because they're trans they i i can't do it anymore isn't that very weird isn't that very weird but here's where here's one that gets even weirder okay what happens if you go out on a date with somebody and they have a vagina and and you enjoy their vagina and you have a great time and you get together and all this stuff happens you get married and you go to have kids and you can't have kids for some reason. And then you go and you get a genetic test and it turns out that the girl that you've been dating was intersex. Are you going to break it off then? Are you going to, is that, is the rule going to apply then? Doesn't it seem like what they're actually saying is I don't like trans people and I think that they're men. 
instead of saying, I don't like, I'm not attracted to some people who happen to be trans in the same way I'm not attracted to some people who happen to be cis. Isn't it very strange that people put all these things on there when basically what they're trying to say, what they're, what they're, what they're saying is in code, essentially. They're saying, I need somebody who has these, they'll never check. And you can call their bluff, right? Because t I, I guarantee you that none of these people has ever had their partner undergo a genetic test. I bet they've never undergone a genetic test. So they might not even be biologically female for all they know. What if they woke up one day and it turns out they were intersex the whole time? Isn't that going to be a bit weird? Do you see how these things start to break down when they're when they're questioned? These statements are strange. And while I will agree that like I would say that the way this is worded is somewhat transphobic in my opinion, um like somebody having genital preferences alone is not in and of itself transphobic. I I don't get it because I think both pussies and cocks are awesome. I think they're great. I like both. They're fucking good. And everything in between. I think there's all kinds of of uh, of of cool shit that people do with their genitals that's super awesome and I don't care. I I care about the person like completely. Now not everyone's like that. I get it. If some people are um if some people are really into cocks or they're really into pussies, okay, that's fair. I get it. You know what? But don't be a dick about it. Just because you specifically like pussies doesn't mean that trans people aren't that, that trans women aren't women or that trans men aren't men. That doesn't, that's not how that works. But you see how via this sort of shit that we're looking at here, there's an attempt to make a generalized statement based on their own preferences. Do you, do you now see what we're dealing with here? And of course, this is the lead, this is the headline. The headline is being run under we're being pressured into sex by some trans women. Now, this article is very long, very, very long, and it has all kinds of weird stories about people. Oh, look who they cite. I forgot about this. They cite Rose of Dawn, one of the most transphobic content creators on YouTube, a content creator who regularly, regularly describes trans women as big bull seals forcing themselves into women's spaces. This is a trans, a self-hating trans woman whose self-hate is apparent in all of her videos. And they cited her, a person who, again, regularly calls trans women big bull seals, which is transphobic. That is just transphobia, raw transphobia. Now, I'm a bit of a big bull seal. You see, I'm a big, strong, scary person. That's how I am. Now, I, I... I don't force myself into anybody's spaces. I mostly hang out in my house and stream and go out to the woods and look at animals and stuff like that. But uh, most trans people I know don't look like me and don't act like me. They're not big butch lesbians like me. Okay, it's just true. But they cited her. Do you see? They've cited a lot of people here. And as we go down further, we will see that we get down to Lily Cade. Lily Cade backed out of filming a porn scene after finding out the other performer was trans. My sex drive was oriented towards women, said Lily. I couldn't see past the fact that I was interacting with was male genitalia altered by surgery and not the reproductive organ of a female ape. And I just couldn't get past that. Hmm. Couldn't handle they, them pussy. And this is the sort of thing right here. The reproductive organ of a female ape. This is the sort of thing that makes me very weird, that weirds me out about TERFs. You see, because TERFs like to say they're feminists, but then they talk about women like they're objects. So is which one is it? Are you a feminist or, or are you not? Because I don't see a world in which talking about women like, like, vaginas as the genitalia of a the reproductive organ of a female ape to me does not seem like a, a world uh in which you view women as uh as anything but sex objects wow <laughs> okay or something else okay or or look we're not going to talk about that okay or something else okay very weird very very strange but i promise you uh 
this is hardly the beginning. So as you can see in this article, I just want to show you in this article, Lily uh, opines quite extensively. One of the biggest parts of the article is devoted to Lily, uh, Lily Cade. So they gave a lot of space to this lady, which is like, huh? Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. They gave a lot of space to this female ape. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, that's very strange. Uh, uh, you know, it's weird to me that, uh, this female ape would be given so much space on the BBC, especially to talk about something like this. In this piece of the, of the argument, they talk about this, and we're going to talk about this real quick. The term cotton ceiling is sometimes used when discussing these issues, but it's controversial. It stems from glass ceiling, which refers to an invisible barrier preventing women from climbing to the top of the career ladder. You want to know who else is is uh, affected by the, the glass ceiling? Anyone who is identified as a woman. Do you know that trans women also have a huge problem getting to the top of industries? Because guess what? They're seen as women. They go into the industry. Nobody knows they're trans. And then they're discriminated against just like everyone else. Just like every other woman. Interesting how that works. But let's keep going. Cotton is a reference to women's underwear with the phase in phrase intended to represent the difficulty some trans women feel they face when seeking relationships or sex. Breaking the cotton ceiling means being able to have sex with a woman. No, it does not. No, it fucking does not. So first of all, this is an unattributed quote, by the way. So nobody, there's no attribution to this quote. And secondly, that is not what that means. It is an, a, a, a blatant lie. The, the cotton ceiling refers to the fact that just mysteriously, trans people always end up either getting banned, ignored, or mistreated on dating apps, on, uh, in the dating scenes. And yes, the cotton and cotton ceiling refers to the clothes worn by trans people. Exactly. So, do you see where this is going really off the rails? Okay? Do you see where this... And this is a BBC news article that has been written on this. And also notice the implicit bias in in this uh in this in this sentence breaking the cotton ceiling means being able to have sex with a woman no it does not no it does not first of all trans women date other trans women all the time they have sex with women all the time do you notice how they they tie in here there is an implied cis here interesting interesting how that goes weird a little a small little piece to note and you'll notice that a lot, by the way. If you read articles about trans people, there will be all kinds of slip-ups like this where trans women aren't actually considered women. They're considered something other. They're not normal women. T4T transbians, the most common variety? Yes, obviously. Trans women who date other trans women is incredibly common because it's safe. Also, trans women who date trans men is also something that's very common because it's safer. And also, there's other reasons for it too. Don't 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 mistake that. But it is safer. Of course it is. If you if you're worried about meeting people like this, then of course you're gonna stick with people that are like you, that understand your background. It makes complete sense. Trans people have shared history with one another. Of course they're gonna do that. Especially in a world that's this hostile. But of course there's you know there's all kinds of reasons. You you meet more trans people. When you're trans, you meet more trans people. So there's just a, a passive uh, there's just a, a passive thing. Yeah. It's common experience. It's shared social groups. There's all kinds of reasons that trans people often date other trans people. Also, trans people have more appreciation for trans bodies. So let's be real. Trans people are better at sex with other trans people. It's really fucking cool. If you're, if you're in any way not cis, whether trans or non-binary or, or any other identity, dating cis people is exhausting. Well, yes, the cotton, the cotton ceiling does not refer to being able to have sex with a cis woman. That is not even, it has never been used like that. It refers to the fact that trans people get mysteriously uh, squeezed out of dating spaces and then they end up um, having to do, having to meet each other through Twitter or through Discord because you either get banned outright off of 
um, dating sites, which does happen all the time, by the way. There is all kinds of bullshit that gets trans people banned off of dating sites. Some which are, are specifically anti-trans, others which are like, oh, sorry, your chosen name doesn't match with your ID, so we're kicking you off. That's the cotton ceiling right there. The cotton ceiling is saying that trans people is a society that says that trans people are below relationships. That's the cotton ceiling, not this lie, which is just a lie. Nobody would ever cite the cotton ceiling as meaning this. It's ridiculous. So I've given you an idea of what this article was like, okay? And you might be going, okay, that's pretty fucking bad. Because I mean, there's a ton of this, by the way. Oh yeah, here's another example. Lily Cade, who worked in the industry for 10 years, used to go by the label Porn Star Valley or Porn Valley's Golden Star Lesbian because she only ever had sex with other women. Again, note right here, another example of the, of the article asserting the turf ideology in the text of the article. They, she only ever had sex with other women. Hmm. But she won't have sex with trans people because she doesn't think trans people are people let alone uh let alone uh, uh uh women lily was asked to do a, a scene with devoe in in T toronto and initially agreed after looking at photos of her but she backed out in advance after discovering online that she was a trans woman so we can see how this goes she already she she looked up her shit and agreed to a shoot and then was like oh wait you're trans yuck which hey you can decline for whatever reason, but if you if you go ew trans, that people might go. That's a little transphobic, don't you think? You thought I was pretty online. You're mad just because I'm my genetics like say differently than what I identify as. Yeah, the cotton ceiling thing was a big one. This is something that happens, by the way, all the time. Um, th th this happens all the time in in publishing in in publish uh publications like the BBC. There are all kinds of 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 little sort of sneaky, um, uh, underhanded tactics that are used like that, like changing, like think about it, because if you if you look at this, I'm sorry, I'm I'm hovering on this a little bit, but I want to talk about this. If you think about this, breaking the cotton ceiling means having sex with a woman. Wow, that sounds predatory, doesn't it? That sounds like all the trans people are hanging out in a back room, going, "How do we how do we figure out how to fuck those pussy havers?" Isn't that absurd? I have literally, I've never even heard, like trans people don't even joke about that shit. They don't even joke about that shit. And that is, and yet that's the framing. By saying that a term that's commonly used by not just trans people, but all types of, of, of gender theorists is, uh, is about having sex with cis women. That's very fucked. Very, very, very fucked. Very manipulative. And also just dead wrong. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I can't actually show you this, this next one. However, I am going to post a web archive link. This is the web archive link so you all can verify that I am not making up a single bit of this. We're go I have copied down the text of this and we're going to read through it here on stream so you guys can taste how bad this really is. Okay? And I'm going to put another little thing up here because I want to make sure that people understand whose words um, I'm reading so that nobody can make a mistake about whose words these are, okay? Because this is going to be really bad. And this is where the CWs come in, okay? Listen, okay? Sexual assault, murder, rape. All of this is contained in this goddamn shit, Okay? This is very, 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 um, very, very ridiculous, okay? So we're going to read this, and we're going to talk about this. I always bring the receipts. You know this. This is how I do things. Always bring the receipts. Why can't I show it on stream? Because there's porn all over the place. It's a porn site. It was written on her porn site. And this was written... It's also, yeah, it's really bad. This was written on November 2nd, so yesterday. This was published yesterday, okay? Do you understand? So this this is brand new. Now, remember, Lily Cade was published in the BBC on the 26th, and just six, seven days later, she wrote 
this manifesto, which we are about to read, okay? Warning again, one last warning before we jump into this. This thing is unhinged. I mean unhinged, okay? Okay, let's start this. The piece is by Lily Cade, and it's titled, Where the Fuck Are These Children's Mothers? Okay. Where the fuck are these children's mothers? You're the mothers, right? The moms? The mums? I need the mothers on my side. I'm on the side of the breeders. I'm on the side of the children. Fuck feelings. I care about the emotional and physical well-being of the future generations. Doesn't that sound a little bit similar to something we've heard before? Does anybody, uh, anybody know the 14 words? Anyway, not some spoiled little fuck of the easiest, stupidest path of least resistance society that has ever existed bullshit delusions. So this is nonsense. This is, and get ready for this. This is a screed, okay? This is not well written. This is nothing, okay? I'm not here to play back and forth games with the actually faggots who with the wedge of their actually and your weak, well-meaning, nice, feminine kindness and your ignorance of the smell of sulfur on the monster before you, you have rolled a Trojan horse full of literal baby fucking goddamn pedophile monsters into your ivory towers, your kindergartens, your locker rooms, your Olympics, your prisons, everywhere you sought to stand in public. Fuck these people. So, yeah. Off to the start, just unbelievable. Uh, calling all trans people baby fucking pedophile monsters? Yeah, this is Nazi shit. This was done to hurt you, to make a mockery of you, to hold you down. This was done by men who hate women more than any other men who have ever walked the earth. The worst men that have ever existed. Trans women. Men so worthless that they can't admit the most obvious thing about themselves that is obvious to the dogs and the rats who can smell their manhood and should be obvious to every mother on earth. So, remember, a feminist who believes that you can smell your womanhood. So apparently, according to this per according to this person and to the others who sign off on this, you if you don't smell like a woman, you're not a woman to them. Bit weird, huh? That's a bit weird, isn't it? Feminist. Wake the fuck up, bitch, before they slice up even one more child in public. Trans women are vile, weak, disgusting, whiny, fake victim masturbators who should be ashamed of themselves. They threaten suicide and you roll over. You disgust me too. But there's one noble response to a man who tries to use the threat of violence against himself to manipulate a woman's emotions. Fucking do it then. That's the message that the, the, the TERFs, that's the message that the TERF faction wants you to know. Remember, this is a person who just a week ago was published and the article is still up in the BBC. This person was the person the BBC called on to talk about trans issues. And we're not even close to done. That's what TERFs have to say. Die then. Just die. They're telling, they're looking in the face of every, uh, every young trans person and saying, I hope you die. No woman should ever pity a weak man. Oh, real feminist there. Super feminist. Men have to be strong. Men have to be a big, masculine, strong, and silent type. Tear your fucking blinders off, bitch. What the fuck is wrong with you? Your pity rewards weak your pity rewards weak men for their weakness. You have sacrificed your children's futures on the altar of pity. I have looked I have looked thousands of adult men in the eyes, and I have not met one man once who believed that trans women are women. Well, you haven't met any men then. Sorry, that's just how it goes. Soldiers, bull riders, artists, dope smokers. Boomer. Lawyers, men. No one believes that trans women are women. Trans women know they are men. No, they don't. They are forcing you to pretend to believe they are women, to rape your minds and the minds of your children. They are like Big Brother. Wow, wow, this is just like 1984. Them twisting your language so that you don't have the words to make sense of reality. This is power, bitch. This is the shape of power. These men run your world now because you refuse to speak truth to power. So, like, you realize this is completely, this is completely, uh, like, unhinged. There's, there's no, even, even if you, 
believe, even if you're a transphobe and you think that trans women are men, the idea that trans people hold the power in the universe is as absurd as the JQ. It is just absurd. Completely unhinged. But let's keep going. Trans women are men. Say it. Own it. Hold the fucking line, bitch. Mitch Fest held the bit held the line. So when Mitch Fest fell, so fell Western civilization. Hmm. Yes. Feminists. Very much about uh very, very obsessed with the fall of Western civilization. Hmm. This is a pedophile cult. It's been here the whole time. You gave these people too much power, so they became a pedophile cult. Wow, that is like literally just straight out of the JQ, isn't it? The lesbians tried to warn you, but no one listens to the lesbians. I broke Matt Max Hardcore's nose, bitch, and drank at his house and shared his cameraman. Max Hord Hardcore, a whorebreaker who still slings fake dick, has more integrity than the whole of Western civilization, who would rather stroke their cocks and their phones while the world burns than speak truth to power. Say what you want about me, but I never fucked no kids. Well, you raped people, though. I would send my daughter to learn what a golden shower is from Max Hardcore before I let these satanic tranny freaks educate her about her body and her soul. Do you do you realize how insane that is? Do you know what this was just said here? She just said that she would send her daughter to go get pissed on by a by a porn star then then trans people exist in public. Do you see what I'm talking about, about, about this whole turf thing? The turf thing is an ideology that has gone so out of control and they will claim they're being censored even when they're literally published in the mainline articles of the BBC. So there's a fact check problem going on here. There's a reality check. This person screaming about reality being this way, and oh, I'm sure all of the fans of Lily Cade will be like, oh, look, Demon Mama is pulling your strings and warping reality because apparently I'm a psychic like that. Um, but the reality is we know this isn't true. We know trans people don't, don't occupy the halls of power. Trans people have no systemic power. None. And even worse, this person is admitting that they would go and let a porn star teach their kid about golden showers rather than be taught about trans people. That's really fucked if you ask me. You have abdicated your responsibility as a mother. You have sold your children for the trance of the endless scroll. For cheap validation. For candy crush bitch you stupid fucking cow. How could you? Because you're too cowed to draw a line. Enough is enough. Your horrifying addiction is making you stupid and weak and your children are suffering because of it. You are no different than a heroin addict who ties the cord for her child to shoot up. Trans women are men. Trans women are evil. Trans women are rapists. Trans women are predators. Do you see how stupid this is? Do, do you not realize what this is? This is... This is hate. This is hate speech. This is trying to get people to, uh, to just based on pure irrationality, hate. Trans women are men who have surrendered to their shadow. That's what it means to be evil. I should fucking know. What? The men beneath these vile personas can still be redeemed. So long as the soul walks the earth, it can be redeemed. Trans women cannot. There is no such thing as a trans woman. There is no such thing as gender ID, ID, identity. This is a sick fetish. Very, wow. Very feminist here. Super, super feminist. Wow. Yeah, this is esoteric fascism right here. This is esoteric fascism. Yes. Yes. For those of you who aren't familiar with, with how esoteric fascists write, this is how they write. Trans women are a lie. They know and I know, and if you can't see it, you're not paying attention. Their fetish is lying to you, jerking off all over everything you care about, pissing into your children's developing minds, and making you shut up and take it. <laughs> what? Weak men are the natural prey of whores. I see right through them. 
I read their dark hearts. Some of them are vile sadists and some are just worthless bootlickers, but every single one of them is evil. Yeah, she really likes piss. And remember, this person opining about uh, about all of this degeneracy and all of this nonsense is a sex worker, a lesbian sex worker. 20 years ago, not even, well, not even 20 years, like, literally now, there are conservatives who would say the exact words about her for being gay. Can we just take a second? Can we just take a second that there are, it, the entirety of the right would say the exact same thing about her just for being gay and also probably for being a sex worker. But remember, this is the person that got a platform from the BBC. Trans women are evil pedophiles. Okay, by the way, right here, just so you can see right here, I'm going to zoom right up, right up on this. Right here. Do you see this right here? I just want to, I just want to take a moment. Hold on. We're going to take a moment here. And I want from all of you, the biggest, I told you so ever. I want the biggest, I told you so point from all of the internet owes me massively. Because remember back in June when I said that ta that the kink at pride equals pedophilia narrative is incredibly, incredibly irresponsible, fear-mongering, moral panic bullshit that borderlines on the blood libel? Wow. Looks like we're right back here again. And just so you know, once again, massive dub from the Demon Mama Quadrant. Massive dub for the fucking Oracle of Internet Politics. I did multiple segments talking about this exact shit how does it feel to be proven right once again depressing i would rather oh my god i would give anything to be an unhinged screaming sandwich sign idiot who never is right about anything but i always am because that would mean that the world is a better place than i thought it was but it's not Trans women are evil pedophiles who have twisted the minds of your people so badly with annoying, ugly, stupid language that your children are mutilating, mutilating their bodies to please them. That doesn't even make sense. The sur Trans people aren't even the surgeons. Trans people aren't even, like, what are you talking about? These people understand the attention. Attention is the currency of your horrifying society. Teenage girls want attention more than anything else on earth. They have been offered a choice between mincing TikTok whore and navel-gazing spoiled, rotten, weak, pathetic, fake man victims because you sold them out for the smartphone. Wait, this doesn't even make sense. Fake man, TikTok whore or navel-gazing spoiled, rotten, weak, pathetic, fake man victims. Wait, teenage girls. This is a fuck up. I mean, this is just a fuck up, but let's keep going. Trans women and the shadow lords of the algorithm control this attention. They are pedophiles, predators, monsters, shadow beasts, the literal devil. These men hate women. They are jealous, panty-wearing, sick, masturbating fucks who have infiltrated every level of your society with one goal, degrade women. Piss on the faces of your mothers, your daughters, the women who fought to get here. Piss on your right to say no. Cut your breasts off, show, sew your pussies shut. Take the word mother, how the fuck dare you. Let let how how the fuck dare you let the actually faggots take the word mother from you remember this is from this is from somebody who's uh, uh, the gold star lesbian calling everybody fucking faggots yeah i don't know she's obsessed with the piss i i feel like uh no you know you want to know what this does sound like a psychotic break no i don't think it does honestly do you know what this sounds like this sounds like hate rhetoric have you ever read any of the manifestos of like uh, of like previous hate like hate manifestos? Have you ever seen any of these? Have you ever read like you know uh, the manifesto of like um, fucking what's his face the OKC guy the the Oklahoma City bomber? Have you ever read like shit? This is this is this is the shit that's posted all the time by far right people all over the place. It's not this is not just psychosis. This is hate. This is what hate does to your brain. Yeah, Elliot Roger. I've read part of the CC shooter. It reads the same. The Christchurch shooter's manifesto is basically the same. 
This is not a psychotic break. This is the, the natural result of an ideology that tells you that trans people are evil. Look at this. I mean, listen, listen, listen to this right here. I'm going to retweet. I'm going to re say this right here. We're just going to make sure this is here. Trans women are, and the shadow Lords of the algorithm control this attention. They are pedophiles, predators, monsters, shadow beasts, the literal devil. These men hate women. They have one goal, degrade women. This is the language of hate. This is what people do when they want to motivate violence against others. This is the language of hate. Do you understand? So, no, I don't think this is a psychotic break. I think this is the natural result of hate-filled ideology because you'll hear the same thing from fundamentalist Christians about gay people. Exactly the same. It is mundanity. This level of hate is literally the natural result of hateful ideologies. Where the fuck are your balls, bitch? Where are the mother bears? Well, okay, this is just weird. I know what a woman is, bitch, and I know what a man is. I know what a mother is, and I know what a child is. And I sure as fuck know what a pedophile is. A pedophile is someone who sacrifices the souls of children to feed his shadow self. I don't even know what the fuck that means. What the fuck does that- this is nonsense. A pedophile fucks kids. A pedophile believes the validation of his monstrous sexual fetish is worth the, worth, worth the rape of thousands upon thousands of your little girls and little boys. Do you hear this language? Do you hear this language? They're coming for you now, quickly, they're coming for you. Your daughters, your sons, your babies, generations of your children, bred now for it. Their minds warped from birth, their deep animal truths denied. These T-slur freaks are experimenting on your children and cutting them apart in full view of the public, and you stand by and let it happen because you're worried they will call you out for being afraid of them. You are worried they will take away your social media. Fuck social media. It did this. Burn it to the fucking ground and hold these monsters accountable. The evil trannies are 1% of the population. They control the matrix. They do not control real life. Call me transphobic. I am transphobic. You should be too. Hey, at least you out and said it. The trans ideology is bullshit on its face. A lot. No, I mean, that doesn't even make any sense. First of all, what is the trans ideology? Secondly, you're, 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 what you're talking about is factually wrong. Because you're talking about people going, hey, you know, it's kind of weird that our government says that we only have two genders when we know for a fact that more than one, more than two genders have existed for all of history. Your government, the government's pretty weird to say there's only two sexes when we know intersex people represent a huge percentage of the population by comparison. This is what Constance was describing when he came on stream and talked about structural anti-Semitism. Yes, yes. No, this was not a Twitter thread. This is from her website. This is from her porn site where she sells her porn and blogs. The trans ideology is bullshit on his face. A lie built to suborn these soulless pedophiles in their public grooming of children. This is a pedophile cult. This is the real pedophile cult that has been staring you in the face this whole time laughing, masturbating, the naked emperor stroking his cock while you try to find some new nice words to explain gently to him in Newspeak that you would like him to stop and that he is naked. Newspeak doesn't have those words. What? What is that even? Like, this is literally, this could be a Dave Rubin thing. Like, this is, like, ir irrelevant. Like, I mean, it's uh, incomprehensible. He won't stop. He hates you. Enough is enough. Speak English, bitch. Fuck your new speak. Speak English, bitch. Hmm. Huh. We weird. Uh-oh. A little bit of that racism. Ooh, a little bit of that racism sneaking in. Fuck your newspeak. I piss on your newspeak. No woman should ever let another word of this vile mockery of English that is newspeak pass her lips ever again. You know which words I mean. Don't say them. Don't write them. The truth is beautiful. Newspeak is not. Hold the line. Let the pedophile monsters keep their newspeak. Speak English as all men still do once the pussies leave the room. Isn't that a little weird? Isn't that a little weird right there? Fuck your pronoun dance. Fuck your obfuscation while the blood truth stares you in the face. Do you think the Marines speak new speak? What are the Marines? What? Do you think the tuna boat fishermen ask for my pronoun? What? Grow up. 
A dog knows what a bitch is. I walk with the dogs. This dead whore is the last man left in America. Take the culture back or the dogs will be all that survives of Western civilization. Okay. So we need to take a second here, real quick. We need to take a second here, okay? Um, let me just tell you a quick thing, okay? So, wait a minute. How many people... I want to do a quick... Uh, let's do this real quick. Have you read 1984? Yes, yes. Or no. 84 votes, and we have a little over 60% haven't read the book. Okay, this is a good moment, okay? Newspeak. Let's talk about Newspeak, okay? The concept of Newspeak was a, was introduced in uh, 1984. In 1984, the government um, imposed the, uh, the gradually imposed the usage of a term of, of, a, of a new language called Newspeak. Newspeak was based off of English, but was simplified, okay? Newspeak is not just new words. That is not what Newspeak was. In fact, it is explicitly stated in 1984 that the purpose of Newspeak was to limit language, okay? So let me give you an example of this. I'm going to open up my little notebook here, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go from there. I'll show you what I'm talking about, okay? So here's, here's a Newspeak thing, okay? So good would be the same so good stays the same right now in in english you could say what if you wanted to say something was better than good what if you wanted to say something that was like like something was even better than good like like what what are some words somebody throw me a little word here that you think would be uh better than good better than good great okay here we go great fantastic excellent Incredible. Poggers. Uh, better. Gooder. Phenomenal. Stupendous. Epic. Amazing. Okay, so we got that. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay? Here we go. That's really good. Let me just close this real quick. So, in Newspeak, all of these words would become... Plus good. Do you see? So instead of having to say great, fantastic, excellent, incredible, poggers, better, good, or phenomenal, you just say plus good. Or if you really, really need it, double plus good. And that's that's Newspeak. Newspeak was a language that had that was designed to limit your expression. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not supposed, it was not about inv just inventing new words. It was restructuring language so that people couldn't express themselves as well. Because in 1984, personal expression was key, w crushing personal expression was key to crushing the population. You can't formulate rebellion, exactly, because your thought has been limited. Because you grew up not knowing a bunch of different ways to say things, a bunch of different ways to think about different topics. You have the government's way. Something is double plus good, or that's it. You don't have... Yes, exactly. It kills subcultures. It flattens out culture into a way that's easily understandable by the state. Rhodes says, it was made to prevent the usage of any, uh, any anti-Ingsoc. Anti-Ingsoc was the, uh, uh, Ingsoc was the government of, of the book. Yes. Statements that's more complex than Big Brother Double Plus Ungood. Yes. That was the goal. The goal was to try to raise a generation of people that didn't have the words to meaningfully criticize, um, uh, uh, the, the, the government. Do you understand what I'm saying? And also to limit their imagination so that the only thing they knew was the world that they lived in. And think about this. Here's another thing. Ready? Here's another interesting thing. Notice that part of Newspeak is not just about, um, about limiting your ability to think about things, but also it's about making it known what you're saying. If you only have one word where you can say bad. So right now, let me, let me ask you this. If, if I went around uh, walking, if I turned on my camera every single day and I looked at you and I said, government bad, government bad, government bad, well, the government's going to know exactly what I'm saying, right? And first of all, it's not entertaining. It would be very boring. 
Um, but the government will know what I'm saying exactly. They will know I'm a critic because I only can say government bad, government bad, government ungood. But instead, I can say, guys, the way that the government is fucking you is unbelievable. And that is a little different. Or I can say, hey, it's important that we criticize these governmental structures. But you see, if it's Newspeak, if I don't know any language except Newspeak English, the only thing I can say is the government double, double plus ungood. Yes, limited language makes it easier to find, identify, and silence dissenters. So now that I've talked about it, this is a little bit, this is a little bit of a side note. But what I'm trying to tell you is that her understanding of what um, Newspeak is, is ridiculous. Whenever conservatives talk about Newspeak, they don't know what they're talking about. They aren't actually talking about the concept of Newspeak. They're just using a buzzword. Newspeak is about, it was specifically about limiting language, coming up with new words, uh, being able to say poggers for, for good, being able to say that your gender is a hundred different things is an expansion, a growth, a natural progression of language, not the reduction. Newspeak was about the reduction of language so that the only language that existed was language that was determined by the state. It was about refusing to allow you outside of the box of the fascistic government of 1984. And what they hear is they hear Newspeak and they go, oh, those are new words. That's what Newspeak is. That's not what Newspeak was. Newspeak is the opposite. They didn't read the book. They didn't read the fucking book. But, but Newspeak is the opposite of what they're saying. Coming up with new words to describe things empowers us. It means that I can talk about things with great depth. You notice that, okay, you notice that I don't just, um, you guys come and tune in over here to see me review games and stuff all the time. How useful would a review be to you if all I said was, it's good? Like, what if I just said, wingspan, guys, it's good? It wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be very useful, huh? That would be pretty pointless. The reality is that with lots of words to describe different things, words that have nuance, sometimes words that might only be used in certain contexts, gives us more knowledge. There are things that we can, that, there are things that exist in our minds right now that could not even be conceptualized by people in the past. Do you realize that, right? Listen up, imps. Do you realize that a couple of generations ago, there were concepts that could not exist because humans hadn't even thought of the words to describe those concepts yet? Unbelievable, right? It's not just that more words equals more good. It's just that it's that it's natural for us to come up to, with new new words that describe things that we're experiencing. Do you know how sometimes we borrow words? Have you all ever heard the word Schadenfreude? It's a word I use all the time. Does anybody know what that means? Schadenfreude is when you get when you get pleasure from the suffering of someone you don't like. That's a German word. English doesn't have a word for that, so we borrowed it from German. Because it's actually useful to have a word for that. And everybody, tons of people in America know what schadenfreude is, even though it's not an English word. We borrowed it because the Germans came up with a word for something we hadn't named yet. Yeah, machismo, deja vu, all of these. There was a Simpsons episode about that? Yeah, democracy is Greek. There's all kinds of words like this. Language is supposed to go like that. So this is a bit of a tangent, but I think it's an important tangent for all of you to understand. Whenever you hear conservatives talking about Newspeak, ask if it's actually, if what they're talking about is actually about the limiting, limiting of language or if they're just mad that they don't like the thing that they're talking about. Or d'oeuvres, yeah. Rhodes says one example of a reduction as as an alteration is that Newspeak has the word free, but it only means the absence of like your head is free of lice. This was actually to prevent the understanding of old texts that had records department missed. Yeah, that's a small piece of lore. In in 1984, the word free means like empty. They the government redefined the word free so that old texts about liberation wouldn't make sense to people because they would just see this like you should be free and they'd be like you should be empty. What does that mean? That's something that happened in 1984. That was a part of the story. Here we go. Hey, look. Hey, look. We got fucking, we got shit from literal Adolf Hitler. 
In connection with the Jewish question, I have this to say. It is a shameful spectacle to see how the whole democratic world is oozing sympathy for the poor, tormented Jewish people, but remains hard-hearted and obdurate when it comes to helping them, which is surely, in view of this attitude, an obvious duty. They assure us we cannot take them unless Germany is prepared to allow them a certain amount of capital to bring with them as Im immigrants. For hundreds of years, Germany was good enough to receive these elements, though they possess nothing except infectious, infectious political and physical diseases. Do you hear? This is the same shit. That's an Adolf Hitler speech, and it mirrors what we're reading here. It's the same vibe. Imagine turning into the stream to see me read. Yeah, exactly. So how close are we to 1984? Well, we'll talk about that afterwards. Let's actually continue with this, okay? Where were we here? Here we go. Oh, here we go. How perfect. This is your great replacement, bitch. These people castrate your kids. They sold them to Big Pharma to be castrated while you cheer them on for living their truth. What the fuck? The fuck? How do you sleep at night? Self-mutilation has never been and never will be a cure for mental illness. Self-mutilation is a sign of extreme psychological di distress. This is your next opiate crisis. The opiate crisis... The opiate crisis, which was literally and factually orchestrated by the family that owns multi-billion dollar multinational corporations, is the same as trans people. Literally, just unhinged. There's no world. Not, like, not even Nazis usually go this far. This is so unhinged. End this before it gets worse. Listen to that. End this before it gets worse. Stand up to the cult. Every fucking teenage girl experiences dysphoria. This cure is acceptance and spiritual growth. A fucking gym routine. This is, this is Jordan Peterson. Clean your room! Hobbies, goals, control over the desires. The intellect trained to guard the heart. What? Compassion, but never, but never pity. Not bullshit personas, lies, a lifetime commitment to pharmaceuticals, hack job surgeries that construct a vile funhouse mirror effigy of the opposite sex from the bodies honed by millions of years of evolution that you have allowed the worst people in your society to educate your daughters about. Again, like more unhinged nonsense. This is all shit that's just, it's just absurd, dr like dramatization. And yet people buy into this. Do you hear the ferocity that's used? The... Yeah, yeah. Interesting. How do you end this? Isn't that an interesting question? Isn't that a fucking interesting question? Hmm. I wonder what she means by that. Are we maybe going to find out? I have a feeling that we're going to find out. I have walked the world and watched this cancer stretch across it. They are making money from this soul reap. Not just the evil pedophiles, but the even darker evil of the truly soulless money men who stand by and let it happen because they love money so much. Okay, this is just a stupid argument. I just want to fact check this for a second. Trans people are a small percentage of the population, a notable percentage, but we are poor, okay? Trans people are fucking poor as sin. The Like... Trans people do not give mo tons of money to the pharmaceutical giants. Trans people are cut out of health insurance. Trans people are literally ignored. We are not money makers for the pharmaceutical industry. We are poor as shit. This is so stupid. It's not, it's, it's mathematically nonsensical what she's saying. Nonsensical. Is she literally, yeah, they love money so much. Yeah, yes. Yes. Is she literally going to say, is she going so Hitlerish that she's going to say the transes control all the money? Yup. The power structure knows this is horrible. They just don't care. What? Your children who agree to be mutilated for the attention of the cult are weak. Okay. Another little fact check. Do you know that like a lot of trans people don't ever get gender confirming surgery? You know that, right? Like a lot of Trans people never get gender confirming surgery. Some of them don't want it, like me. I don't, I don't, well, I mean, to be fair, I did have an orchiectomy, which is a gender confirming surgery, but I'm not having SRS. There are a lot of trans people who never get the opportunity because it costs so much. So the idea that there is like a, a group of people clapping them along is ridiculous. It is patently absurd. You will not find this anywhere in reality. The only thing you will find is trans people unironically supporting one another. Yeah, just coming out takes a lot of strength. Almost nobody gets it. It is very rare. I know so many trans people, and I know only a handful who've actually been able to, to get SRS. 
It's really, really rare. The fuck do the money men care about a bunch of stupid, mentally damaged children with endless scroll addictions? They fuck kids too. They have eyes like mine that truck no pity. You are sheep to them. They are all laughing all the way to the bank. That's why you're not allowed to speak up. Money. Big Pharma. Oh yes, Big Pharma. Traditionally the supporters of trans people. Big Pharma has... Big Pharma, literally, it had to be passed by law in the United States that Big Pharma couldn't discriminate against trans people because they were so ready to discriminate against trans people. You know when I came out that I had to get my doctor to to prescribe, uh, sorry, to prescribe me, um, hormones for acne, but that was the original plan, and then Obamacare passed, and my doctor was like, we don't have to do that anymore. That's a real thing. Like, the far big pharma was not in support of trans people, has never had been. That's why you're not allowed to speak up. Anyway, the Sacklers had science, too. Look at these people. The paragons of this paradigm. These mutilated sideshow freaks. Fake-ass whiny victims holding you down in fear. These freak doctors chopping up your babies. Do these people seem happy to you? Do they seem wise? Do your trusted children to the smartphone... You trusted your children to the smartphone, and this is what it did to you. I committed voter fraud for Joe Biden because I didn't want to watch that shit-filled sack of shit where once stood a man shit all over himself in public every day, filtered through the voices of every last human soul in America who could talk about nothing else that whole time but the color and shape of his shit. Joe Biden put a pedophile monster in charge of health and human services so that the process of trapping your children with that lifetime commitment to pharmaceuticals can be honed ever further into the path of least resistance. So, by the way, this is a direct accusation that, uh, that, uh, uh, Rachel, what's her last name? Rachel, 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 oh, I always forget her last name. Rachel Levine. Rachel Levine is a trans woman who has been given the position of Department of Health of Health and Human Services. This is an accusation that jo that uh, that that Joe Biden gave R Rachel Levine uh, Rachel Levine a, a a a job because she's apparently a pedophile. Yes, I believe she is Jewish. Yeah, she also just admitted to committing voter fraud. I don't know what that even means. And also accused a four-star general of of being a, a pedophile. Yeah, Natalie Marie brings up another thing. People have to take all kinds of meds for the rest of their life for all sorts of medical reasons. Yeah. Weird how much ableism there is in here, too. Yeah, she called the Secretary of Health and Human Services a pedophile. Let's continue. Your children's... Oh, wait, here we go. Joe Biden knows that's a man. So that's weird. And he knows that a, that's a pedophile, and he knows that's the agenda. No one did anything. Fuck these people. This is QAnon right here. This is uh, QAnon shit. Your children's teachers are either in this pedophile cult or the usual well-meaning weak man pitying feminine fools that suborn evil because they're too stupid to see it. Your children's teachers allow them to start their horrifying lifetime addiction to cross-sex hormones and the feeding of their shadow selves behind your back. 12-year-old girls experiencing the normal rhythms of the experience of being 12-year-old girls are encouraged to mutilate their growing bodies to please these pedophiles because it gets attention. Unhinged. Again, completely unhinged. Just totally unhinged. Pedophiles fuck children. These pedophiles are fucking your children in public every day. Fucking their minds. Fucking their bodies. Often these tortured man-women who have been so sadistically brought up with no real men in their lives. Their fathers having sold their balls to the endless scroll. Their mothers so weak and broken themselves by the stupid garbage that they go along with it. I've seen it. The parents mean well, but they're just idiots. Because she's bred from stupid, weak people and trained by shadow monsters, the traumatized child victim of the cult can't spot a predator, and they bear these children to these monsters. This was not put in Photoshop to add the background. This is the real back. This is the real website background. Then the monsters fuck the children too, just like the pedophile cult of the South did. The shape of power is always a pedophile cult. Ask that finger-sucking bitch of a whorebreaker, Maxwell. 
What? Do you remember that video with the trans couple trying to breastfeed a baby with a disgusting, weak, whiny, fake victim, piece of shit man not worth the air he breathes, crying about how no one respects him as a mother as he tries to squeeze the hormone-induced weepings of his man titties into a baby's mouth? Find me that video. Watch that video and tell me that's not a worthless masturbating pedophile fucking a baby while the traumatized child your garbage society has groomed to let pump his seed into her fertile womb coddles his weakness and lets it happen. How can you stop stand for this where the fuck is child services where are the fu where are that baby's grandparents how can you let this happen in public and say nothing what do you think that baby's future look like and here's where it gets real wild everybody i thought pedos got the wall this is where it goes off the rails okay i thought chomos got the rope this is a slur for a child for a child molesting homosexuals. Chomos, yeah. That's a fucking child child molester. So is Bruce Jenner. So this is probably going to end up getting getting this person in uh in some serious hot water. That's a direct uh that's a direct accusation to an individual. He told you he gets off to wearing his own daughter's clothes and you stood by and did nothing. Tear your blinders off. This is not acceptable. You do not have to accept this. Speak truth to power. Trans women are men. They know they are men. If these men can't slit the throats of these vile personas in public, admit what they have done. Take off the dress. Look with the abject shame upon the affront to God and nature they have wrought in the service of their masturbatory fantasies. Apologize for the children they have hurt with their lies and their drugs and their grooming. Apologize for the incarcerated women they have fed to rapists rapist monsters, apologize for the lesbian spa spaces they have desecrated and devote the rest of their lives to repairing the damage they have done. If you left it up to me, I'd execute every last one of them personally. And this person still has an article up on the BBC. A multiple in a row, direct physical threat of violence against all trans people. And this person was given a platform and still has a platform in the BBC. Right now, as we're speaking. This is a hate crime, right? Can Lily be charged for this? We'll find out, I guess. This is why I said this is a murderous manifesto. We can make no mistake about what this is intended to do. There is... There is... There can be no mistake about what this is. Yeah, this is a call to action. Pedos get the wall. Chomos get the rope. Where the fuck are the Marines? Where the fuck is the army? Where are the farmers with pitchforks? Where are the cowboys? Where are the Indians? Where the fuck are the men? Where the fuck are the mothers? How, the, how can you stand up for this? If my grandfather and all his brothers who stood up to Hitler interesting invocation there we're still here they would rip the still beating hearts from every last one of these pedophile monsters in public the same way that they have raped your kids so would every man who walked this earth before your culture decided to accept masturbation as healthy and not the soul draining creative energy wasting evil pathetic act of a man not worth his balls remember sex worker sex worker apparently masturbation is okay for uh women but not for men very weird Break your smartphones. Break the internet. Make these people pay. Afraid of trannies? They should be afraid of you. Break your smartphones. Break the internet. Make these people say... Make these people pay. Afraid of trannies? They should be afraid of you. Take the red pill, bitch, before it's too late. Everyone's queer. Queer is utterly meaningless. A box of, of nothing your children stuff themselves into to be cool with no connection left to the rebellion for which it once stood. You were never a part of that rebellion. The queer movement never included you. Just so that we're clear, Lily Cade was never a part of the queer movement. Lily Cade was a self-described gold star lesbian. That is not queer. You are not queer if you're a gold star lesbian. You are not queer if you're anti-trans. You are not queer if you are anti-non-binary. That is not queer. She was never a part of this queer movement, ever. Never once. Not historically and certainly not now. Identity is a sin. All lies are a sin. I fought for the right to love who I loved. I did not fight for the right to lie in public. 
you're full of shit is what you are. But it's not done yet. It's not done yet. Here we go. Uh, I, uh, I did not fight what has been done in my name as an American to whine about victimhood. No one deserves these rights. Kill this ideology. No mercy, no quarter. Wipe the stain of newspeak from the ivory tower forever. They should be ashamed of themselves. The, oops, there we go. There we go. Sorry about that. I don't know what the hell happened there. Sorry about that. Wipe the stain of newspeak from the ivory tower forever. They should be ashamed of themselves, the actually faggots. Take back womanhood from the fetishists. Own the truth. Clear eyes, bitch. Once more into the breach. I've already been canceled. I can speak the truth. Dead whores tell no lies. I care not for fame nor money. I have no fart smartphone. Fart phone. I truck no pity. I crawled on my belly through the darkness for this. I walked back into the matrix to get you out. Only God can forgive me. Do you know how offensive that is? Do you know how offensive it is? This is intentional, by the way. Using matrix allegories. A, a, a film about being trans made by trans people. Only God can forgive me. I'm not here for forgiveness. I'm here to take the language back from the forked tongue. Hey, everybody. Forked tongue. Fuck you. Uh, um, anyway, <clears throat> I'm here to take the language back from the forked tongue of Newspeak and save your daughters. Are you with me or are you with the actually faggots and the evil pedophiles and the damaged, spoiled children who've been trained by the two worst forces of evil that I've ever seen? The Matrix and the evil trannies that the matrix breeds do you believe in free speech and atonement and the wisdom of the fallen or do you believe that no one who sins should ever speak again the monsters named me the cotton ceiling to break me and others like me they raped and groomed and tortured and sliced up and desecrated and educated your daughters because not a single solitary state in all of western civilization had the balls or the brains or the heart to say no to these freaks by the way remember lily cade admitted to sexually assaulting multiple people just so we're just so we're clear about who's the rapist here what the fuck is wrong with you are you going to let them take me down with some lazy memes while you shit out your shit opinions about shit you know nothing about and masturbate your outrage into your phone and do nothing or are you going to take off your goddamn polite society blinders and look this monster in the eye i am the cotton ceiling bitch i'm the only one who said no they took down Mitch Fest. They can't take down Lily Cade. She's already dead. I'm the bullet, bitch, if you let me be. Who else has the balls, the brains, the voice, and the pitiless eyes to, fuck these, to fight these monsters? I'm a fucking soldier. You ready? I'm ready. We can't fight this within the Matrix. No more back and forth message board internet bullshit. This ends now. Stop arguing on the internet with the bootlicking boot foot soldiers of men who are fucking your children. Peak trans, bitch. Let's go. Let's see their cotton ceiling and let's raise them. And I'm going to show this to you again. We're going to fuck around with this thing because I think this is kind of important to do here because I want you to be able to see exactly what we're talking about here. Okay, hold on. Let's rate. Let's let's see their cotton ceiling and let's raise them the wall. We explained the cotton ceiling earlier on in the episode. So you'll have to go back. Art, uh, here we go. Let's uh, let's zoom in a little more here. And then we'll go back up to here. And we'll go like this. Are you going to let these monsters piss on motherhood and fuck your kids? Or are you going to stand up for the truth? And that's the end of that. That's the end of that. That's the end uh, of the uh, of the of the, uh, of the of the of the of the manifesto. Saying she's already dead and is a bullet and is a soldier is extremely school shooter stuff. Yeah, but this is not a kid. This is an this is an adult who has now been um, who has who has now been been uh, been platformed by the BBC. And just so you know, just so you know, BBC rejects complaints that it published a transphobic article. Corporation says the article about the experience of some lesbians met its editorial guidelines. The BBC has rejected complaints that it published a transphobic article and has instead given a commitment to covering different viewpoints in the name of impartiality. So yeah, that's the state of things on Turf Island. This was this was that was before the manifesto was posted, but it doesn't matter. She's been doing this for a long time.
They know what you're doing. They know what you're doing. They know what they're doing. But remember that, uh, that so, so before we go on into to all the analysis, let's just talk about this. This manifesto is an attempt at, uh, at, uh, at ginning up uh, stochastic terrorism. Okay? There can be no doubt about that. There's literal direct calls for others to do violence. Um, in this in this piece, there was multiple calls to violence. There were multiple calls to um, historical forms of, exec of of specific execution that was used against queer people. And and the BBC is is pretending that they didn't publish an article that directly supports this. Remember, the BBC's article was worded in nicer language, but it it expressed the same sentiments. It was a bunch of things saying that if trans people think you're transphobic, that means they're trying to force you to fuck them. We looked at this. This manifesto is what all TERFs think like, even if they don't like to admit it or admit it to themselves. If you go on to TERF, uh, if you go on to TERF spaces, if you spend any time, just go. You can go there yourself. Go, go make an anonymous account on, on a TERF image board and go see what they say about trans people. Randar the Barbarian says, I do not understand how trans people put up with this. I cannot even... Uh, I cannot even comprehend a large swath of people excluding me from a conversation about my own existence. Y'all are some powerful folk. Ragnar, I appreciate that. And the truth is, the simple truth is, we don't. A lot of trans people die. A lot of trans people can't handle this. And they shouldn't have to, but they can't. Now, all of you all are going to follow rule, one, rule number one, which is do not die. Even if you have to spit in the face of people like this. That warning, ah, yes, the kid says, I'm unironically scared for my trans femme friends. The warning that you said about having spare rooms for people to stay in rings true. I've been saying this for a long time, okay, everybody? Listen, please. Listen to me. If you don't listen to anything else in this segment, listen to me right now. Hard times are coming in a lot of places for trans people, okay? But hard times can be survived. First of all, rule number one, I don't care what you have to do uh, to survive. Do not die. You fight until the moment that you possibly can't. Okay? That's how it goes. Secondly, this is this has been going on for a long time. Okay? This this sort of shit has been going on. We know, like, through this has been we've been we've covered this even on this channel many times. We've covered the amount of transphobic, explicitly transphobic hit pieces that get published all over the internet. Remember when there was all this scare in um do you remember all the scare a couple months ago where all of the turfs online and all of the conservatives were talking about how a Canadian guy was arrested for dead naming his uh, his kid? Do you all remember that? And then it turned out that that was completely false, and the guy was an unhinged stalker who had actually been uh, asked, had, who had actually been had a uh, a um uh what's the word uh what's it called? Restraining order. Who had a restraining order uh, 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 taken out against him because he kept because he literally was doxing his own child's doctor against the wills of the child, the mother, and the doctor. And that was that was spun all across the internet news as oh you can't you ooh you dead name your own child and oh you use the wrong name and you're going to prison. No, the reality is that trans people are are treated horrifically. That these, these crimes they make up about trans people do not exist. It is literally page for page out of the blood libel. A long time ago, I had a conversation with... Uh, who who remembers the conversation I had with aristocracy? Does anybody remember aristocracy? We love I love aristocracy. Aristocracy is great. Does anybody remember the conversation I had with aristocracy? It was a long-form interview. And at one point during the interview, there was a sort of a long segment where me and Eris talked about the shared, the, 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 the parallel histories of Jewish people and trans people. Yeah, the Jewish and trans cultural crossover. There is a reason why queer people, trans people, gay people, and Jewish people have a similar history. Yes, it was, and we were talking about specifically how the way that the, the same methods of ghettoizing and, and, and marginalizing um, and and accusing uh, us of strange conspiracies um, is is shared, and as a result, I think that Jewish people and trans people have a lot of 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 stuff that they can talk about and grow from from one another on. 
And the blood libel thing is so clear here. We talked about how traditionally the same things that were used against Jewish people, saying that Jewish people are pedophiles who kidnap children and drain their blood or fuck them or whatever. That's what that's literally the blood libel. It's been around since like the 1200s at least. Um, how that is used almost identically against trans people. And we see it here perfectly. All of these things, that they're sacrificing the souls of children to Satan, that they're, uh, they're sucking the vital essences out of them and raping them and all this shit that they say. It's the blood libel, but it's being used against trans people. Isn't that weird? Same shit, same exact tactic. Same exact tactic. Interestingly, we also know how it turned how's it how it's turned out in the past. This is the same language that was used to whip up a moral panic that led to the Holocaust. You understand that, right? This is the type of shit. This is exactly the type of shit that was written not just about not just about uh about gay people, that was written too, but about Jewish people. What about people who have a different skin color? Makes the book burning so much more relevant. Yeah, isn't it interesting how this person advocates, person who was just who was just platformed by one of the, if not the biggest news website in the world. Trans people are the last minority our society finds permissible to advocate for genocide. We're not the only ones, but we are one of them. Immigrants are another one. What is the blood libel? The blood libel uh, here, let's read about the blood libel because I've mentioned it multiple times here. We can literally just read the Wikipedia article. The Wikipedia, it's such an old thing that the Wikipedia article is actually really good. Thanks. Blood libel or ritual murder libel, libel, also known as the blood accusation, is an anti-Semitic canard which falsely accuses Jews of murdering Christian children or other Gentiles in order to use their blood in the performance of religious rituals, historically echoing very old myths of secret cult practices in many prehistoric societies the claim as it is levied against jews was rarely attested to in antiquity it was however frequently attached to early communities of christians in the roman empire re-emerging as a christian accusation against jews in the medieval period this libel alongside those of well po poisoning and host desecration became a major theme of persecution of the jews in europe and from that period to the present day blood libels typically claim that jews require human blood for the baking of matzahs an unleavened flatbed bread which is eaten during passover although this element of the accusation was allegedly absent in the earliest stories um they were uh, accused of reenacting the crucifixion the accusations often assert that the blood of christian children is especially coveted and historically blood libels have been made in order to account for otherwise unexplained deaths of those children in some cases, the alleged victims of human sacrifice have become venerated as Christian martyrs. Three of these, et cetera, et cetera, became the objects of lo local cults, even though they were never canonized. There have been about 150 recorded cases of blood libel that resulted in the arrest and killing of Jews throughout history. Most of them in the Middle Ages, almost every case, Jews were murdered, sometimes by a mob, sometimes following torture in a trial. The term blood libel has also been used to, in reference to any unpleasant or damaging false accusation and as a result has a broader metaphoric meaning. However, this wider usage of the term remains controversial because many Jewish groups object to it. And look at how much, look at how huge this fucking article is. Satanic ritual abuse, moral panic. Human cannibalism. Look, 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 look. The satanic ritual abuse. This is another thing. The satanic ritual abuse problem in the United States. This happened during the 80s. This is the same shit. There were accusations that, uh, interestingly, towards mostly uh, uh, marginalized people, that they were a part of secret satanic cults raping their children. So anyway, that's the blood libel. And what what how can I say like this is literally blood libel stuff, right? Like I could open up any page of this. Uh like here we go. Like where where where's this thing? Uh Where's the where's the spot that I'm talking about? Oh yeah. Uh take your culture back or the dogs will be all that survives of western civilization. How do you sleep at night? Self -mutilation, mutilation has never been a cure for mental illness. Self mutilation is a sign of extreme psychological distress. Uh, these, the true, uh, they are making money from this soul reap. Do you hear that? 
The, this is the exact language of the blood libel. And it's being used against, interestingly, in this piece, both trans people and Jewish people. Isn't that weird? Isn't that very strange? Quite a genuine serious concern I have is that transphobia may become a staple of the Tory political platform. Anti-immigrant rhetoric is losing its effectiveness post-Brexit in light of Tory incompetence. And already a number of Scottish MSPs, both Tory and SMP, have shown support to turf protests in front of the Scottish Parliament. I would hope that won't come to pass, but it seems very possible. It's very likely. Um, keep in mind, real quick. Keep in mind, real quick. Um, turf rhetoric was spot was um was spurned on because of the heritage foundation the heritage foundation is a far right american think tank they spent a lot of money publishing pieces about turf stuff in the uk this is a this is a fact Big Orange Jew says, during the modernization of Judaism, there was a debate among many Jews if we should integrate or stay isolated from Europe because of the misconception of Jewish people. One of the largest groups of Jewish people that integrated into European society was in Germany. Yes. Yeah, the rope, the rope is absolutely a reference to the Turner Diaries. Do any, does anybody know what the Turner Diaries are? The Turner Diaries are a neo-fascist, neo-Nazi uh, fiction novel that was the that is largely attributed to the far right movement to like spurning on the far right movement in America. It's a book that talks about how all of the patriots are going to rise up and that there will be a day where all the immigrants and gay people will be hung in the street. And that day is called the day of the rope. It's the Nazi Bible. Yeah. And there is two day of the rope references. It was the book that inspired Timothy McVeigh. Yes, it was. Timothy McVeigh was uh, handing out copies of the Turner Diaries at, at Waco. It's a shitty dystopian fanfic. Of course it is. But it's it's hugely, hugely influential on the right-wing movement in America. It's Of course it's cringe as fuck. The writing is terrible. Yeah, we could watch the video on it. It was Timothy McVeigh's favorite book or one of his favorites. He handed it out at Waco. Timothy McVeigh was the Oklahoma City bomber, by the way. A far-right, racist, homophobe who blew up a building in America. Why do you think people become so far-right like this? There's a number of reasons. First of all, we have far-right we have far-right systems in place. We are not. There's this weird, uh, like there's this weird thing that really annoys the shit out of me. Um, there's this really, really weird thing that's happened with liberals and neoliberals in the modern era where they believe that we live in like the most progressive time that's ever existed and that nothing bad will ever come back that like we've left the days of racism behind us but we haven't that shit is recent memory and that shit is still being churned out by the same organizations that were churning it out back then we've had a few legal victories And, it's, and what our society operates on is a constant marginalization of people who are different. Not people who do harm, but people who are different. And they will invent the harm to justify treating people who are different poorly. Trans people, gay people, people with different skin colors, people with, uh, with uh, mental, health, mental health issues, disabled people. It's vi yeah, it's Weimar arrogance. It is. So, you know, it's very weird to me. Um that the bbc would so it's not weird to me look let's be let's be completely real i know what this is okay the bbc has a turf agenda this has been a problem for a long time the bbc has been he heavily critiqued for constantly giving platforms not on not in the name of balance but giving platforms to the most unhinged turfs around people who go on and spot and and say extremely false things about trans people Things that play into already existing prejudices against trans people. This is why life has gotten continually more rough for trans people in the UK. And this already happens here in the United States. But the thing is, here in the United States, we don't have as much of the turf shit because we have more explicit transphobia. We have states right now that are passing bans on trans people. We know, we've talked about this on this show. You know, we've really we've really gone in on this all of this this show. Hate crimes have gone up for white and or trans mask people in 2021. I'm sure the BBC is going to help a lot. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting how the only thing they, they talk about all of this shit, the only metric that's going up is 
hate crimes against trans people. Yep. We got the Abbott. Exactly. Exactly. From Texas, we've got Governor Abbott trying to ban trans people from sports. Like, look at this shit. Like, look, you could just, you can just search this and it's all the fuck over the place. This was from October 26th, same day that that article was published. Texas governor signed into law a bill that bans trans girls from participating in female sports in public schools, a measure that goes further than current rules in the state that already limited some trans people from participating in class of sports aligned with their gender identity. This is what's happening in the United States. So, um, do you understand what the state of affairs are for trans people around the world right now? And, and there comes a time in, I think there comes up a, a very plausible time in the near future where there are so many laws in so many states of the United States where trans people can't actually live safely anymore. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of states in the U.S. that may not be safe for trans people anymore. And this is why I have talked about one of the most important things I hope, I truly, truly hope that people in my audience and in other political audiences can do is is to be able to, to, to figure out what you might be able to do to help trans people. Because you probably will know a trans person who's going to be, um, who might need some help in the future. Maybe you could just loan them a spot on your guest bed. Maybe they could come stay with you for a while. Maybe you could spot them a hundred bucks to get their HRT. Maybe you could spot them a plane ticket to get out of their state. But the reality is that there's a, there's a, there is a plausible future in which trans people are deeply, deeply publicly discriminated against in this country. And, and the reality is, well, look, it's not just, look, if you don't have money, you can't do it, but, but you might have other opportunities. Keep your mind open and keep your ears open and also keep your hearts open, please. Please. I always have room for my childhood friend. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for people like you. It was my friend. Um, it was my friend who saved me when I got kicked out. A friend who just gave me a spare room to stay in when I got kicked out by my family for being trans. So I don't know. Uh, this is a pretty shocking development. Um, but, uh, you know, it's shocking how blunt it was. But we've been saying this. I just, what I want you all to listen to, if you are... Um, if you are, uh, not trans, if you're a cis person and this is shocking to you, listen, listen closely, watch for this shit. This shit is getting stuff that leads up to this is getting published all over the place. The article we showed you had explicit lies about what the cotton ceiling was just that were there to further, uh, to further a, a ridiculous, ridiculous and insulting, uh, stereotype about trans people. This is not new, but if this is, if this level of, of, of bluntness shocks you, listen, true nuts. I know you, you, you allies, some of you allies who listen to me are way in the know on this shit. And we appreciate you just so you know, look, not to, not to be like that, but seriously, we're going to need all the help we can get in the future. Trans people are going to, uh, are going to be, I mean, listen, what we're looking at is uh, who we are is being criminalized. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that actually means, right? Um, do you know what it means to have your identity criminalized? That means that you are a criminal no matter what you do. You, who you are, has been criminalized. And when that happens, you are forced into the margins. You can't get work. You are damned to poverty unless you go do more crimes. But why wouldn't you? Because you're already a criminal anyway. Do you see how that's happening? And that's happening right now in the United States. There are states who have criminalized being trans, like to varying degrees. We had the, uh, the, the Arkansas bill earlier this year. That means that you have to post, uh, you have to post a public warning that says, oh, trans people can come into the bathrooms here. In reality, people aren't going to post that. They just won't let trans people into the bathroom. And that gives legal precedent to discriminate against trans people for pissing. And so, I don't know, this puts us in a weird place, you know, it puts us in a very, very weird place and it puts us in, it puts people like me who I am publicly trans in a very dangerous place because now I have people like Lily Cade saying that because I am the avatar of the, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a relatively big trans streamer now comparatively. This sort of thing, saying, oh, these people need the wall. These people get the rope. These people need to die. This, these people need to be, yeah. 
oh, of course there's more public outrage. There's more fighting back, but it's not enough. It's not enough. How how can you compete with a with a when when the BBC takes the side of the turfs, which they have, they have again and again and again. Louis Baton says, I live in Melbourne and dated a trans woman who was originally from, from Louisiana. To have her documents reflect her gender, she would not only have to get bottom surgery, and once she did, she would have to physically travel back to Louisiana and be examined by a doctor to ensure her vagina was femme enough before her passport would reflect her gender. Yes, there are multiple states in the United States that make it illegal to change your gender identity on official documents unless you have an expensive surgery. That is criminalizing a person. That criminalizes a person you understand what are your thoughts on trans people arming themselves as these kinds of measures don't seem to be slowing down do it but do it responsibly do it but do it responsibly i very 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 much believed in in the second amendment for queer people just do it responsibly please be safe don't get into american gun culture there is a new and budding queer gun culture okay and absolutely you yes if you if you can responsibly own a gun you should do it Of course, do it out of protection, not vengeance. Vengeance is ridiculous. It's a silly, silly thing. Lots of trans people deal with suicidality, though, so it can be unsafe. It can be unsafe. That's why I said do it responsibly, okay? Yes, if you can't safely own a gun, make friends with leftists who do. Yes, indeed. That's the most important part. Did you know the most important part of community defense is having a community? If you don't have a community, make the moves to get there. And yes, there is a rising queer gun culture. Yes, there is. If you get a bow, you cannot shoot yourself with it. That is true. Bows are also very good. Bows are legitimate, by the way. They're not real good for close-range self-defense, but they're still pretty good. Yeah, I can understand why people don't want to join the SRA. I get it. I get it. You don't have to. You don't have to be a part of a gun group like that.